Hello, my name is Andrew Fox and I'm a lecturer in civil engineering here at the university and uh, I'm going to talk to you today, uh, well I'm going to try and uh, provide you with some ideas on how we could actually go about promoting uh, long-term sustainability through the study of uh, short-term resilience planning. Um, yep, that's it. I'm just going to well, I'm going to provide a little bit of background, but not too much, and then uh, quickly uh, move through to um, the outcomes of the particular research project of mine. Uh, I'm not going to dwell too long here, but uh, just to say that uh, for a long time now, uh, the people doing resilience research at least have uh, recognised that there is a strong link between resilience and sustainability, uh, potentially even the holy grail, linking the two things together, the holy grail of hazard planning. So. Um, uh, this kind of linkage and the research that I'm doing uh, should, in theory, um, uh, be quite useful in both the fields of community resilience studies and also in sustainability. The, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the actual research I'm going to be talking about is my own PhD, which was uh, completed after many years, uh, just last year. The, uh, the actual uh, PhD title was about was Communities, Institutions and Flood Risk. Uh, trying to uh, look at how we can mobilise social capital to, to improve community resilience. Um, I was particularly interested in um, the relationship between uh, institutions involved in flood risk management and communities at risk from flooding. Um, so the idea was how we can actually use a study of uh, social capital, uh, social capital derived from community uh, to institution links to actually enhance resilience and therefore you might say uh, long-term sustainability. Um, <clears throat> the actual research was uh, adopted a case study approach. I looked at three different communities that were at risk from uh, tidal flooding in the Tain estuary. Um, Tynmouth itself at the entrance to the estuary, Shaldon and uh, Newton Abbott tucked away there at the back of the estuary. In order to uh, assess the community. Uh, I used the Environment Agency flood risk maps and uh, then used a uh, source pathway receptor type approach to model the way that the, the flood would enter the community and then uh, track through the community itself. Uh, using that I was able to break each community down into a number of receptor areas and then for the point of view of my research looking at the uh, social structure of the uh, community I used the land use classification system to try and divide the communities up into um, categories depending on the main land use at the level of the flood itself. So the red areas are residential areas mainly, the uh, yellow ones are retail areas, the grey ones are industrial areas, the green and orange areas are largely empty spaces, either car parking or parks, recreational areas. So this is Newton Abbott. The main source of the, the hazard for Newton Abbott was the River Lemon running right the way through the middle of the flood risk community. And, um, uh, and we sort of see a, a relatively diverse community with a range of, you might say, industrial type or organisational type receptor areas and individual family community resident areas. In terms of uh, Tynmouth, Tinworth, the main source of the flood hazard came from the estuary side of the community. There's a big flood wall on this side which largely protects the community from sea uh, level flood, some uh, uh, flooding potential coming from the sea. Uh, so the, the risk, uh, as it stood when I did my research, came from the back and the flood would travel into the community from the back here. The, uh, the, uh, the Tynmouth community was actually fairly polarised. You have very distinct residential areas and then very distinct retail areas and surrounded either side of those some industrial areas. So uh, quite a distinct polarisation within the community, whereas the, um, the Newton Abbott uh, community was a little bit more integrated. The third community, uh, Sheldon, uh, the, uh, the main threat to the community there came from a long boundary along the estuary uh, which was fairly porous to, uh, to flooding and um, uh, the, uh, although the community itself was uh, uh, mainly residential, a few uh, recreational areas and a few 
community services, schools and doctor surgeries and things like that are actually in blue here, featured a bit more, uh, but very few retail and industrial areas. So that was just to get a flavour for the different communities that were part of the study. Um, actually then, from, from that analysis, I was able to uh, then go into the community and do, undertake a more detailed survey uh, uh, to anal analyse the survey data. I used an uh, open source uh, software which is freely available to actually help create these sociograms um, and that's what I'm going to focus on now. So looking at Newton Abbott, we realised that, uh, I've already told you, that the community was a slightly a good mix of uh, residential and retail and industrial. Uh, from the uh, sociogram analysis, this is what I came up with. Uh, the red blobs here are the individuals who took part in the survey. Uh, the black blobs are the actual organisations that were com uh, community-based organisations or actually in some cases they're actually flood risk management organisations. What we notice from here, from this particular uh, diagram, is that the Newton Abbott uh, community itself is highly uh, fragmented. Um, a large group here, largely um, linked to informal uh, organisations within their community, uh, but others just isolated and not actually engaged or linked to the rest of the community here. Uh, for the flood risk management purposes, um, it, this could be a problem because these organisations here are the actual uh, local flood risk management institutions which are, you might say, oversee flood risk management policy and implementation in Newton Abbott. Uh, in particular, the Environment Agency and Devon County Council here had a link to somebody in the community, but that person wasn't actually linked to the rest of the community, hence making any engagement with the flood risk management institution and the uh, uh, community quite difficult because they didn't actually have a good link into the main uh, community of Newton Abbott itself. Um, there was actually no evidence in the uh, survey of, of Newton Abbott that they were actually worried about flood risk at all. Uh, and there was no local group which actually dealt with <coughs> flood risk issues. If we look at uh, uh, New Tynmouth, the Tynmouth had showed a similar uh, level of fragmentation, um, but this particularly strong uh, retail area here was actually quite well connected and had a very, you might call it a very strong clique, but they were not connected to the main residential areas. It was within the main residential areas though that there was actually a group of people who were worried about flood risk in Tynmouth, um, and um, as far as the flood risk management organisations are concerned, that's great they could actually deal with that, flood, that local community group to try and address flood risk issues in the community. But all of the flood risk management institutions were actually linked to individuals that actually had no connection to the strong clique and no connection to the actual flood risk group itself, therefore making um, uh, engagement with the local community to address flood risk issues quite difficult. Basically what we, have, what we see here is that the social capital which is it signified by the links here, there's a disconnect between the institutions and the main community. Looking at uh, Sheldon, the, um, the Sheldon community, we've already said, is fairly homogenous, largely uh, residential, and that actually uh, made a very significant difference in the sociogram that came out of the study um, because we found absolutely no fragmentation in this community. And, uh, they did have also a flood risk management group, which is great if you're the environment agency or the local council and you want to engage the community uh, in flood risk management issues. And the good thing was that the, um, all of the flood risk management local institutions had a way of connecting to the flood, local flood risk group. And it was very easy then for the people like the environment agency and the local authorities to actually mobilise the community to actually address any particular uh, flood risk. Um, in particular, also, uh, what was useful is that there was a direct link between the community group, this individual here, had a link to the local community-based group and the environment agency. So, actually, there's already a, a link established with this, in this particular community which facilitates the interaction between flood risk management organisations and the community itself. Uh, the issue for them actually was about resources and uh, so um, the focus at this point when I was doing my research wasn't the actual trying to actually engage 
uh, between the, not trying to establish an engagement between the organisations and the community, it was more about building local resources to address future needs. So, yeah, final slide. Uh, what do we learn from this? Well, in terms of studying uh, social capital in communities, we, we sort of what we reveal is that uh, Newton Abbott has quite a low level of resilience, you might say. Uh, hence, you could question whether its long-term sustainability to future flood impacts could be uh, uh, threatened. Um, Tynmouth, because they've actually made some moves towards actually uh, addressing the local flood risk, recognising it, creating a local group, but still having lots of fragmentation. The challenge there in terms of their long-term sustainability is a little bit uh, less severe than in Newton Abbott. And in, in uh, Chaldon, you may have the model example of a well-connected community where uh, the threat, if you like, is well-recognised and the connections between all the people in the community is good and effective and working. So therefore, their long-term sustainability is, uh, is fairly good. And that's it. I think that's what I have time for.